Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, August 11th, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. UN predicts disaster if global warming is not checked. June 29th, 1989. 30 years ago, the United Nations, a senior UN environmental official, says entire nations could be wiped off the face of the earth by rising sea levels if the global warming trend is not reversed by the year 2000. Keep calm. It's boom time. Nothing is as beautiful and rare as the watermelon snow covering Yosemite's mountaintops. Some might say that there's nothing like a juicy watermelon. Others might say there's nothing better than going outside during the first snowfall of winter. Well, how about both in the middle of summer? It's not a bummer. It's a specific algae called Climadonas nivalis. It thrives in freezing temperatures in liquid water. It lives on the top of the snow in the summer. Snow in the summer. Winds and hailstorms sweep through the fairground Saturday evening. Having been to the Western Montana Fair every year since 1970, he's never seen anything like this. Severe weather, including two-inch hail in Piedmont, leads to power outages. This is Black Hawk in Somerset in South Dakota. Say it ain't soda. That's a pretty good-sized rock there, and it's partially melted. Severe weather, flooding, threatens the plains and the Midwest. Over 2 million people across seven states are at risk for severe weather today. A weather system moving across the central part of the country will bring heavy rain and the threat of severe weather, including hail and lightning. The main threats will be damaging wind, large hail, torrential rain, tornadoes becoming possible. Heads up, Missouri. Heads up, Illinois. Iowa. I think Rex is out there. He might be getting McCooked any moment. Rainfall locally five inches or greater. There have already been 66 reports of severe weather, including baseball-sized hail in Meade, South Dakota, and winds of 78 miles per hour in Thomas, Kansas. Baseball-sized hail. And Southern Heat, today's heat index will be a scorcher. Jacksonville, 109, looking fine. Hot days ahead. Heat index will continue in the southeast while it feels like fall where I'm at. It's nice out. Hot and humid across the south, stormy and unsettled over the plains and northwest. Hot and humid weather will prevail over much of the southeastern U.S. this weekend. Meanwhile, multiple rounds of heavy rain and strong to severe thunderstorms are likely. Speak of the devil. Moving on. Apologize for that. Someone's trying to call. It's midday. Everyone's calling me. Get ready for more rain and floods as travel chaos enters a second day. Look at this, UK. Second day, Britain is braced for another day of heavy rain and thunder after 60 mile power winds and torrential downpours spark chaos across the country. Severe yellow warning for rain in place of parts of Scotland and northern England. The Met Office has warned. Nearly a month's rain fell in Cumbria yesterday as Transport networks struggled to cope with the onslaught. One man in his 50s suffered life-changing injuries after being hit by a falling tree in Strippenval, south of London. Look for rain showers, sunny spells, and less windy with a big blue dot and an exclamation point swirling around Newcastle and Glasgow. Greenland's rapidly melting is a hugely underpaid story. It's officially time to panic. Did you hear that... 11 billion tons dropped off of Greenland's ice sheet in just one day. Well, if you watch Tony Heller's video, he totally put an end to the nonsense. We've been talking about this for weeks. I predicted that the Greenland melt, the catastrophic melt they're talking about, was going to recover by mid-August into multi-decadal averages. And there it is. Just like I suspected. Just like we predicted. So it's nonsense. And they did not say that for three days, 36 gigatons of ice were gained in three days versus the 11 in one day. So still at a positive here on Greenland and they still don't know how to do math. Snow and flooding closes roads, showers and thunderstorms likely to continue all weekend. Snow has closed Alpine passes in the South Island of New Zealand while flooding has halted traffic on coastal roads south of Timaru. Oh my goodness, snowing everywhere. Possible snow for Queensland as polar blast heads north. Australia's polar snap is coming to an end. 
but the Blue Mountains continue to see snowfall as the conditions head north. Look at those pictures. And no doubt, you've heard about the kangaroo running in the snow, making its way, making the rounds, snow blankets, Ballarat, and central Victoria. A cold snap is watched across Victoria, plunging the temperatures below zero in many places, drenching others in rain. Totally fluxed out there. Crazy. Moving on, good. Shh. Snow good. Snow falls in Canberra during the AFL clash. Never before in history has snow fallen at an AFL match in Canberra. Never before. But with global warming, it's now falling pretty regularly. So, heads up there. Oh, my gosh. Let me just go ahead. And we're back. I had a phone going off that I had to get rid of. Commuters warned not to drive as snow and 90 kilometer winds continue to lash Southeast Australia. Don't drive. Stay alive. Officials approve permit for outdoor snow park in Florida. What the? Yep, you heard it, Florida. Now, this is the video I was talking about at the kangaroo hopping through snow that's going viral, but you can see the player, it is geographically restricted, and we're not allowed to look at kangaroos in snow in the summer in America. I wonder why. Did you guys see the Niv Shavir uh, article on Forbes was taken down after I reported on it? Yeah, it didn't meet their standards of global warming garbage. Typhoon Lakima. Lakima. Anyone's guess strikes China east coast, kills 22, death toll rises. Two dozen people have died and more than one million forced from their homes as Typhoon Lakima continue to batter down on China's eastern coastline. Check out links below. <coughs> now, another rag, Forbes, is coming out with the exact opposite viewpoint here, why solar activity and cosmic rays can't explain global warming. Niv Shavir has been working his whole life on it, has proven it, but... Now, here is the opposite article, which Forbes will leave up because they're part of the problem. Seismic update, no quakes of note. But there is a moderate uptick worldwide, including the Ring of Fire. And we have this little rumbler here by Greece. 5.0 in Pyrgos. And moderate uptick activity uh, on the Kamchatka, everywhere. Whoa, trippy. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Volcano for forecast could soon be a reality thanks to AI. Now they're going to use AI and satellite imagery to predict changes in the Earth prior to er er eruptions, which is pretty nice. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Most of these volcanoes, by the way, are in completely rural areas and no nobody's looking at them. So until they start puffing or blow up, no one knows. But from space, you can see the precursors. You can see the ground rising, inflation, or you can see subsidence occurring, deformation in the surface. And you can even see small amounts of heat through thermal imaging that people on the ground can't see. So that's good news for volcano forecasting in the future. We're going to need it. No volcanic activity of note. But I do want to point out that the there is... Um, a special report from the Geophysical Institute on Navados de Chilan. You might want to check that out. Russia confirms radioactive material were involved in the deadly blast happening the other day. A mystery explosion at Russia's weapons testing range involved radioactive materials. And authorities admitted on Saturday the blasts admitted death toll rose and signs of creeping radiation emergency as well. We'll never get the real story there. Recursive language and modern imagination were acquired simultaneously during a magnetic reversal and an extinction event 70,000 years ago. The Lion Man sculpture from 37,000 years ago, also during a cosmic ray flux period, shows that you've been lied to. And here's the paper, if you want to read into it, Language Evolution to Revolution. The leap from rich vocabulary non-recursive communication system to the recursive language 70,000 years ago was associated with the acquisition of a novel component of imagination called the prefrontal synthesis. Now, this enabled by a mutation, cosmic rays, that slowed down the prefrontal cortex maturation simultaneously in two or more children. Like I explained, two or more mutations of the same kind become <laughs> evolution, the Romulus and Remus hypothesis. Check it out. This guy must be watching the show. New study in science why humans in Africa fled to the mountains during the last ice age. The same reason Diamond fled to the mountains during this one. 
If you want to know why I'm in Pagosa, read the article. They're picking it up. Fluoride may diminish kidney and liver function in adolescence. Well, so does crack cocaine and vodka, study suggests. But everyone's in taking fluoride in major cities that still have fluoride in the... Well, anyway, read the article. We already talked about things you didn't know about fluoride. Now let's talk about solutions, why growing food is the single most impactful thing you can do in a corrupt political system. Sad face. <clears throat> now, propaganda gardening, a combination of guerrilla gardening and political protest is about developing self-sufficiency while making a simple yet bold statement about the world we share and the rules we choose to live by. Take, for example, Ron Finley, pictured here. The guerrilla gardener from L.A. who inspires the world with no-nonsense truth about how the corporate food system enslaves us. I've been doing the same thing for over a decade. That's how I got my start, marching against Monsanto. Now, this guy's awesome. He lives in a food prison, and that's all by design, just like prisons are by design. He got tired of being an inmate, so he figured, let's change the paradigm, and he started growing his own food. There's one thing that he could do to escape his predestined life that he was unwilling to subscribe to. He didn't know what to do, but he started. And you should too. Farmageddon, farm loan delinquencies and bankruptcy soar. Incomes plunge as we enter an uncertain phase in human history. One way to start learning about how to survive and thrive in the coming times is to learn how to identify edible mushrooms. Here's five easy to identify edible mushrooms for the beginner mushroom hunter. Bar none, the safest and easiest to identify like chicken of the woods and oh, lion's mane. Very easy to identify. And I just uh, found some information from my home state PA that there are absolute parat instability glyphs on the Delaware River and other places. Take a, check them out. That is a parade instability right there. Squatter man much? The population of North America witnessed plasma discharge in the sky. Could be the Charlemagne event as recent as 700 AD. Epstein dies by apparent suicide in jail as the feds left him to do that. FBI will be investigating that nonsense. Massachusetts man tests positive for triple E virus. First human case since 2013. Wow, Massachusetts, that's right near where Lyme disease was spread. And wow, amazing. The 60-year-old man from Southern Plymouth County has been tested positive for the first case of Eastern equine encephalitis, which means you're pretty, according to the Massachusetts Department of Public Health the first case of eastern equine encephalitis since 2013 in Massachusetts, and the risk level has been raised to critical in nine communities. Heads up! Space news, how NASA will protect astronauts from space radiation at the moon. You have to watch this video. Now, what NASA is proposing is they pile a bunch of pillows on each other, and I'm not making this up. You have to watch the video. NASA is going to protect the astronauts from cosmic rays by piling a bunch of pillows and crap on top of them while they, hov they <laughs> huddle in the center of the space. We get more time to prepare. Preparation for an SAP event of which you may know that is already coming and perhaps the magnitude as well. The technique that you would want to use is to put as much mass between you and the source. On the surface of the moon or Mars, Astronauts can go underground or build shelter with local materials. But in transit, astronauts can only be protected with what's on the spacecraft. Which means that you might have elements on a spacecraft that have multiple purposes. NASA space radiation specialists are testing different ways to do this. One strategy they tested on the Orion spacecraft involves crew members barricading themselves with as much mass as possible in the center of the spacecraft. Other possible techniques in development include vests that add mass and electrically charged surfaces that deflect particles. Can't in terms of radiation protection and radiation mitigation, the factor of time is extraordinarily important. The sun has a natural 11-year cycle that transitions through low and high activity, which is indicated by the number of sunspots on the surface. More sunspots mean more eruptions, 
resulting in a higher risk for SEPs. But during this increased solar activity, the sun's magnetic field strengthens. Go check the video out. NASA suggests piling crap on top of you to protect you from cosmic radiation. More solutions. 2019 Crestone Energy Fair schedule is up over at CrestoneEnergyFair.org. I will be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And on Saturday, I'll be speaking about sustainable permaculture from 4.30 to 5.30 on the resilient stage. And on Sunday, I will be taking part of the town hall dialogues from 1.30 to 2.30 and discussing my personal awakening from scumbag to slightly less scumbag, nice person. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing and you should start preparing. You can do that by going to preparewiththeranch.com. Preparewiththeranch.com. Click the links below. See you at Crestone. Be safe, everyone. We love you.